Hi guys, it's Lynn here. I hope everyone is having a fantastic day. Now in today's video, I'm going to be rearranging some of the plants that I bought in from the little greenhouse, the middle greenhouse the other day. I made a video vlog on it when we brought our other not so cold, hardy, serious plants and large euphorbias into the grow room. And then we bought many that was in the smaller little poly, the little greenhouse in here. And at the moment it's a bit of a mess we just put plants in everywhere just to get them in here plants on the floor and a bit of a mess here as you can see lots on the floor i need to keep the um this space free in the middle so when i come in here to work in the winter time i can get to the little table to do plant jobs and uh, also we need to set the dehumidifier and the heater up so i need this clear so a lot of these plants on here are going to be going onto this table here now when I talk about the rearranging, happy to say all of the plants on this side here and um, all of the succulents all on here are very large agave, um, sorry, are very large aloes and uh, the agaves and hawartias and all that over there, they're pretty much okay, so they're going to stay as they are. All on this side here as well, we've got a mixture of many different types of cacti all on the table. This is all done, so this was done over the summer, I can keep this exactly as it is. None of these need to come inside now to overwinter, it's all been done. Um, this is good. But what I'm going to be doing today is this table here, I'm going to be clearing off these plants on here that I brought in giving the trays a good clean, putting them back again and then putting some of the smaller types of serious cacti that we've got here and other types onto this table and I've also got some plants still out in the yard as well I've got some of the apunchas, the prickly pears and also my aeniums as well so they'll need, need to be coming in which I'm going to be bringing in in this video and probably put a bit of an arrangement with the, we've got one lovely big large <laughs> um, apuncha that I'm probably going to be putting at the back there I've also got a very large ec um, the bowl of um, different types of echeverias, graptopotalums growing, it's a beautiful display. But I may or may not put that in here, I may overwinter it upstairs in the grow room because it's very large and overhanging. So I'm not quite sure what to do with that, but that I'm not going to be dealing with just at the moment. I'm going to be dealing with this table here and I'm going to show you what it looks like when it's all sort of tidied up. So I've got my little working table here and I've got my rubbing alcohol, the isopropyl alcohol, a little brush there, a little pot as well, and pruning scissors. Because as I go through the plants, any, if I see any mealybugs or scale insect or any of the signs of pests, I will then get rid of them as I go along. I'll also check under the pots as well. Because sometimes when, especially plants I'm bringing in from the yard, you often find that um, you'll get bugs underneath, especially mealybug nests that need to be uh, treated. And I've still got my epiphyllums out in the yard there. Probably going to be brief. If I don't bring them in today, I'll bring them in tomorrow. The weather's said to get very, very cold from this weekend onwards. It's going to go down to five and three Celsius of a night time. So this is why I want to get everything sort of done before then. And then we can set up the dehumidifier and the heater. But I'll do that as a separate video when we do that. This is the... the bucket that collects the water from the dehumidifier and it's brilliant because the, the dehumidifier especially for cold places like garages and cellars it's not really meant for outdoor use but because we use it inside a polytunnel it doesn't get any water on it or anything that's kept dry it's suitable to use in a polytunnel and it then keeps the air humidity inside this polytunnel at about 40 to 50 percent which is great considering the temperature would, sorry, the, the humidity would normally be about 85 to almost 100% humidity in this polytunnel in the winter time. I say we have a door that we open on the on the, the cold dry days, we open that in the winter to get natural ventilation in. But if it's as wet outside, um, you're going to let more air humidity in. So the dehumidifier works a treat. But as I say, I'll do a separate video when we set that up. So here we go, guys. This is the, um, the trays here. I'm going to take all of these off, back onto the floor again, and then uh, start doing a bit of an arrangement on here. Now that's the trays, all um, brush and panned and uh, checked that there's no signs of any hidden pests under the trays and all done now and now I'm going to start bringing some plants onto the table and this is our very large puncher 
Uh, up, up your collata, I'll put the name going across the screen so you can understand what I'm saying. And this is a huge, very beautiful, big Apuncha, commonly known as the prickly pear. I got it about 27 years ago and it was just one pad, this pad here, and it has grown many pads over the years, plus, plus I've pruned it back multiple times over the years, otherwise it would be absolutely massive. And I normally have this one under the table at the back with the other punchers that we've got all here. But because it is such a beautiful specimen plant, I personally want to have it on full show. So I've got it here and plenty of room at the back to put some smaller cactus plants. And this is all our lofts and other type of cactus plants here. They're still gonna get plenty of light there. Beautiful, beautiful puncher. Yay, that's uh, the first tray done here. And obviously I'm gonna be putting some more plants Smaller plants at the back there, the back of this bigger puncture. And these are all Trichocereus varieties, different types of Trichocereus, some Pachanois, some uh, Pruvianus and other types here. This one here is Trocheski and this is one I got for my uh, rare cactus plant unboxing from my friend Simon, very generous of him. And if you didn't see that amazing video where Simon gifted me the most incredible cactus plants, then you have to check it out. I'll link that video up above and down below in the video description and also many of these lofts as well loft for us Simon gave me they're all doing very very well here in the polytunnel they're going to overwinter in the polytunnel this year because they've had time to acclimatize so very excited to see how they do and uh, now I've just got these two trays left and I'll show you what they look like when I do the, the middle tray now, as I mentioned, I'm checking them all that there's no signs of any pests and things like that. And also I like to give them a bit of a clean. I use a little brush here to get rid of any sort of cobwebs and bits of soil that go onto them and give them a bit of a brush in. This one here is my um, Trichocereus um, bujessi, com commonly known as the um, Pedis cactus, <laughs> um, for obvious reasons I'm not going to go into. Very funny cactus, I've had this for many years and it's formed loads of pups. Awesome big spines, absolutely awesome. Love it so much. And um, this one is going to be great here. And I've made a little video as well, gosh it must be a few years ago now, on how to clean your cacti and succulents. And um, if you haven't seen that video, which a lot of you probably haven't because it was years ago now, I'll link that video up above also and also down below in the video description. And that's a lot more of the table all done here. The 99.9% .9 Trichocereus varieties. This one here is a very large Echinopsis oxygona, very old, extremely old, multi-pupped variety. And this plant is possibly over 50 years old. I've had this now for, it must be about 15, 16, probably 17 years, I can't remember. But my friend had it for 25 years when he gave it to me. And he'd, he'd also, got it from somebody who'd had it for about 20 years or so so I have no idea how old this big echinopsis is but it's a very old anyway and I've just temporarily put the Apuncha off the table just put these at the back here um, I've just got some spare Apuncha vulgaris there because our Apunchas at the back I'll just take you a little bit over to see the back here this is our majority of all our Apunchas I've got some more out in the yard which I'm going to be bringing in and putting under the table to overwinter but I'll do that in another video vlog but um, there's no no space on the table as, as it's full so might as well use the space to put them away here and then this is one this is my Cleistocactus winterii um, and this one is the lovely gold spined variety as well so that's going to go at the back to overwinter I have a Cleistocactus collodimonsis hanging basket which is on the floor at the moment because as I say I'm in the middle of rearranging everything these are going to be hung up up onto the hanging baskets on the top here but I'll do that again in another video because um, I'm just doing this today focusing on this table and uh, now I'm going to put the big puncher back and I've got some aeniums that I've been have had out in the yard and they need to come in so I'm going to be putting them here now yay that's these uh, tables here all rearranged and plants put onto them so that's a bit of the first job done anyway. I still got a lot more to do in the polytunnel because as you can see there, there's still uh, hanging baskets on the floor, agaves on the floor, another ripsalis on the floor. The hanging baskets need to be hung up, the agaves put away. And as I mentioned, I've also still got 
in the yard, epiphyllums hanging up and uh, some slumbergeras as well and also more epiphyllums there. These will need to be coming in into the polytunnel probably tomorrow and I'll probably put the blog up in the next couple of days but they forecast the weather as I say to get very cold this weekend of the night time so even if I temporarily bring these into the polytunnel if it gets too cold and put the heater on and then I'll rearrange them properly in another vlog for you in the next few days. But this is done and a um, little bit of a jungle here with Trichocereus and bigger puncher and uh, the aniums I've put here as well. Nice to have a bit of foliage amongst the cactus but it's really just to overwinter as long as I've got somewhere to overwinter. It's quite bright here in the winter in the in the polytunnel. It's green coated which is not ideal but it does let plenty of light through and it's, a lot of sun does come through still and they seem to overwinter well. So um, a bit of a rearranging little video for you today guys and uh, thank you so much for watching and stay tuned for another rearranging video coming up the next couple of days. As I say I've still got plants in the yard and also plants also need to be moved here so do stay tuned for them videos. I've got a lovely big bowl of um, Echeverias and Graptopotalums also out in the yard has to come in. May put that here on a little plant stand and it can all trail down so that's going to look lovely here. There's room for it. By the way underneath there is loads of cuttings. I've got loads of epiphyllums that I've grown from seed. I started to transplant them all and never got around to finishing it so <laughs> I have to transplant them in the next few days as well. I'll tell you what guys there is no rest for the plant wicked. Anyway Thank you so much for watching all of your incredible support guys, I really appreciate it. And for lots more tips on how you can overwinter cacti and succulents in a lot more detail, check out a video I've made on how to overwinter cacti and succulents, I'll link that video up above also and also down below. And for more growing tips on how you can care for and grow cacti and succulents as well as regular vlog videos, do please subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to click the notification bell so you can be notified when I upload new videos. You can also follow me on Instagram, Twitter and Facebook at Desert Plants of Avalon. And for more growing tips as well, do check out the many growing pages I've got on my website, desertplantsofavalon.com. I want to send you loads of love, heaps of happiness and tons and tons of cactus and succulent power from across the emerald isle and until my next video bye